The big story here of the week, WWE SmackDown will be returning to the USA Network in a new TV rights deal. The deal inclu- also includes four primetime specials on NBC. Per CNBC, the deal has come out to an average of $287 million per year, a total value of $1.4 billion. Fox is not renewing them. Uh, Fox was not willing to spend that money, but USA was, NBC was. And here's the interesting thing. Um, I believe Nick Khan had said that he had promised or said that he was looking to get a 1.5x on the previous deal. You know, this is a pretty good deal, but we don't know what SmackDown, what what Raw and NXT are going to end up go- doing. This is only a great deal if they get it a, a ridiculous amount of money for those two shows. Which I, I expect they're going to get a nice amount of money. But does this mean that they are leaving USA? Also, the days are going to shift. Do you want to put your product on Fridays? SmackDown on Friday? It kind of messed up their schedule, didn't it, MG? By SmackDown moving to Fridays? It did. They had to change. They used to record um, SmackDown on Tuesday and then just post and then just uh, air it wherever they needed to. Or, or Thursdays. So Remember, they were doing Thursdays. Different. Yeah, well, Thursdays, yeah, but that was also, it was, it was taped on Tuesdays. It always had been. And then they went live on Tuesdays, and then the uh, Fox deal happened, and they had to, but Fox paid for a live product, so that yeah. changed. That's when the schedule changed. Yeah, so it, it kind of affected the schedule. Friday's not the best night for TV. It's not the best night for wrestling. Well, no, from what I read, it, they're keeping it on Friday tentatively. Okay, maybe maybe so. it's conditioning, right? It, it only you're yeah. only as good as if your audience is conditioned. But now, you know, a lot of the rumors this week are circulating around Raw. Does Raw move? Do you take Raw off a of Monday, and, and do you, or do you move Raw to a streaming service? I know that they had that meeting with Amazon, and you know, if anybody's willing to lose money and linear is not willing to lose money as much as they were years past, unless if you're the NFL or the NBA and you're a loss leader in that sense. And you have, you know, your, your, whatever your sitcom is that follows that game and it gets a big number and you're able to sell ads on that. And you're able to kind of make more money on that side. But the reality here is outside of, I mean, Fox attempted it. This was a loss leader for them. But you really didn't have a lead up. You had the 10 o'clock news in most markets. So it didn't really make sense for them. I think this is a positive for USA, obviously. For years, my, my relationship with USA, if you listen to the show or any of my other shows, you know that I, I know people on that side. And historically, and you don't need to be an insider, I'm using hand quotes here, to kind of see this. They, they have treated SmackDown as the A show, right? WWE, over the last couple of years, since the pandemic era ended, even before that, moving to Fox, you you knew that that was becoming the A-show. It really is the A-show, right? Your main champion is on there. You, you, you've put all this emphasis on there. Even, yeah, you have Cody on Raw and you have Seth on Raw, but really the story is SmackDown. The USA Network, people at NBCU, they are very aware of this. And whenever I hear criticism... They all, the criticism is how come they get more than we do now? I don't know how even that is, right? It's all perception. You, you know, especially if you're competing with another network for these ratings and we all know that they do better on Fox because they, they're, they're network television. You're always going to do better on network TV, but the importance of that is more the Roman Reigns deal. If Roman's on the show, you're getting numbers. So USA is thrilled. Uh, I think WWE is happy also with this because now, you know, Hulu right now has the next day streaming rights, but that's expiring. That's expiring soon. So when this deal happens next year, do you move everything to Peacock? Right? Doesn't that make the most sense? Your SmackDown next day rights are on Peacock, your Raw, your NXT, your pay-per-views, everything is up over there. It's one unified place to get everything. One thing um, to think about too is... um... You can bring the overrun back into play, being on USA of when needed. Yeah, you don't need to do it all the time, but yeah, now that or, comes back in. Or, and it... or SmackDown will go three hours, which no, I do not want, that. and I'm not no, going to even suggest that. that. <laughs> you I'm just so sorry. 
I'm so sorry. I did, I, but I whispered it. That's the whole thing. They don't hear you if you whisper. That's how radio works. <laughs> only, it's like an ASMR. Only, mm-hmm. only you hear me. The audience doesn't hear me. Our producers at Sports Byline, okay. they have no idea what's happening right now. Just dead air. So, I, you know, I, this is the positive. All right, cool. We'll see what happens here. You know, Monday Night Raw had historical low numbers, which was expected. Yet, yet NFL the first the first week was a mega game, right? And a lot of people tuned out to see what happened to Aaron Rodgers. This week, I think you had two games this week, right? Yes, they they did two games, one like one an hour after the other. So yeah, there was a lot of people were. And I think combined they had <laughs> combined it was like almost like twenty million viewers or something obscene. I, I I don't have the number in front of me. So you know it's a lot of competition. And again, I say this all the time when it comes to linear television. You're not just competing with linear TV. You're not just competing with your genre of viewing. You're competing with TikTok. You're competing with YouTube. You're competing with Twitch. You're competing with podcasts. You're listening to this show right now. There could be something you could be watching. And there's so many of this. I'm not saying that my show is drawing a million people away from WWE or anything. You know, I'm just giving an example. But a couple thousand here, a couple thousand there starts making a difference. V- people viewing habits have changed. And, you know, I think the, I think the networks realize that. And, you know, this is why we, I expect there to be a tremendous deal for WBD and, and AEW. And I expect the same for WWE, wherever those other two shows land, whether it's USA or, or Amazon or something else. But the story here is going to be who is willing to lose some money? That's the game we're going to play here. And if I'm going to bet, if you're going with a streaming provider, I would say uh, the best bet would be an Amazon type provider where they have this abundant amount of money and they will be able to use them as a loss leader for everything else that they do between Amazon Prime, their subscription services, products on the website. You know, sometimes, listen, it's not about a true assessment. Sometimes it's if you really want something, you just move that PNL around a little bit, right? And you say, well, look, yeah, we're spending this much money, but look at the trajectory of our sales. You can make those numbers work. So I'm, I'm very interested in this, man. This is a lot of fun for me. I like, I like this stuff. The other story on the, on the Endeavor side is the, that assessment they did of Vince. Did you see that, MG? Yeah, um, I saw where, where they're allocating, like, his his uh shares up for sale if need be. I don't I don't works? know. You know, I I think a lot a lot of companies do this, especially during a merger. You start doing risk assessment, and obviously Vince is a polarizing person that has had uh, a troublesome two years legally. Uh, you know, this is this is a, a a very standard thing to do. But obviously, we know that Vince's days are are ending there. He's at the end of this, whatever whatever run he has in that company, in the Endeavor company. I don't think it's it expected like that he's was... going to be on that board for 10 years. He's 79 years right. old, 78 years old. How much longer will he be there? Sounds How much like longer will you want to be there? setting up a path. I'm sure setting it's setting up a, up a path. path. For him to get him out, right? Yeah, and I'm sure, I'm sure he's going to one day say, okay, I'm done too, or maybe never, maybe never. So I don't know. Very interesting here. Uh, I... I thought that SmackDown news was interesting. I thought SmackDown was a great show this week. They did a very good job with it. John Cena opened the show with AJ. uh, They had a Bloodline uh, segment. So, listen, they're doing some interesting stuff. Also, releases came. We're going to break that down when we come back because there's a lot of releases here to go into. And some expected, some not so much. Uh... But the big story here is WWE returning to USA in a new TV rights deal. It's a five-year deal. Oh, the two four primetime specials. I will say this. I asked if these are Saturday night's main events, and I was told I don't. they didn't say no. However, they did say they want these to be treated as if they're mini pay-per-views. I don't know what mini means. 